We've now spent several weeks working with Verilog gate primitives to generate digital circuits. This has served well as an entry-level introduction to Verilog and hierarchical design, but we need something a bit more robust if we want to start building more complex circuits. It's time to step up our understanding of Verilog as a language and take a look at what we're actually doing when we write it. In this lab session, we'll be looking at assignment, which is one of the fundamental elements of Verilog and powers pretty much everything that it does. The act of placing values onto nets or wires, registers or variables in Verilog is known as assigning. Each assignment has two parts, a left-hand side and a right-hand side, with an equal symbol between them. The right-hand side can contain any expression that evaluates to a final value, while the left-hand side indicates the net or variable to which the value on the right-hand side is being assigned. Sounds complicated, but we've already been doing this. The gate primitives that we've been using up until now are assigned statements, just in a different format. The left-hand side is the output, whilst the right-hand side expression is a combination of the inputs and the selected gate. So when we create a logic gate in our design, we're assigning the output wire to be a result of the expression generated by performing whatever function on the input wires. There are two main types of assignment, continuous and procedural. We'll just be focusing on continuous assignment this session, but I'll give an overview of both now and we'll be looking at procedural assignment in more detail in the next session. Continuous assignment assigns values to nets and happens whenever there is a change on the right-hand side. As a result, the left-hand side is continuously driven by the right. This can be thought of as wiring up a combinational circuit with jumper wires. Whatever changes there are in the circuit, the output will be affected. Procedural assignment assigns values to registers or variables only under specified conditions, usually on the edge of a clock or another signal. It doesn't matter how much the right-hand side changes, the left-hand side only updates when the conditional signal triggers, latching in the new result. The register or variable will then hold this value until it's assigned again. This facilitates sequential and behavioural Verilog through things like if and case statements, which we'll look at in the final lab session of this course. We'll just be looking at continuous assignment in this session. Continuous assignment allows us to build combinational logic circuits at a higher level of abstraction than with gate primitives. It allows us to significantly reduce the amount of code we have to write, but as a result it's much less verbose. We can't necessarily just glance at it and form the resultant circuit in our minds. The fundamental element of continuous assignment is the assign keyword. We use it to create these assignment expressions and thus generate our circuits. The left-hand side of the expression is our output, which could be a module output or an internal wire, and the right-hand side is the logic which drives that output. As you can see from this example, we aren't limited to a single gate per line anymore, and therefore can theoretically create an entire circuit with just a single line of code. In order to generate these expressions, we need to learn the notation, which is known as gate shorthand. We have individual operators representing each logic gate, as well as a not operator to generate things like NAND and NOR. By building equations using these operators, the Quartus compiler will build us a representative circuit. These operators are known as bitwise operators. The comparisons they perform will take place on a bit-by-bit -bit basis. So if you were to AND two 4-bit wires together, the result would be a 4-bit value comparing bit 0 to bit 0, bit 1 to bit 1, and so on and so forth. This allows us to perform operations on all bits on a bus individually. If we want to validate a bus as a whole, we can use logical operators to compare entire terms to each other. Logical operators operate on multi-bit values as a single entity, and only produce a single bit output. Logical AND allows us to compare two buses to see if they're identical to each other, whereas logical OR would tell us simply if a bus has a non-zero value. So using this gate shorthand notation, we can build up complex combinational logic circuits with just a single assigned statement for each sum of products function. I'm now going to give you an example of how continuous assignment can be used in circuit development and introduce the implementation of another fundamental digital electronics component, a multiplexer. Up until now, we've only really implemented basic combinational circuits in Verilog. Theoretically, we can build anything using gate primitives and hierarchical design, but as we've seen, these designs can get complicated very quickly. 
Now that we've got a better understanding of continuous assignment, we can use it to easily add more complex elements to our circuits and start to build up full digital electronic systems. We could easily build a simple two-input multiplexer from gate primitives by looking at the truth table. As you can see, it's just a couple of AND gates, an OR gate, and an inverter. However, once we start introducing more inputs, the circuit very quickly scales up in complexity. Whilst a four-input multiplexer is still a relatively simple circuit in terms of connections, it's going to be a long process to manually connect the gate primitives together. In complex digital systems, we can easily find ourselves wanting to use 16 and 32-bit multiplexers, so writing these in using gate primitives simply isn't feasible. However, we can use another aspect of continuous assignment to make things a bit easier. One of the things we can do with continuous assignment is connect different nets and buses together without necessarily routing them through any components. As you know from previous weeks, we can address individual nets on a bus in a similar way to how you would access array elements in C++. We can use this addressing to connect individual wires in a bus to different places, or even separate wide buses into narrower ones. All multiplexers really do is select a signal based on the status of the select bit, so we can use that information to build a simple multiplexer using continuous assignment. We'll take the input of our multiplexer to be a bus, and assign the output to be whichever bit on the bus select is pointing to. Because this is continuous assignment, the output is updated every time there is a change in signal on the right hand side of the expression, so as select changes, different nets on the A bus will be connected to the output. As we know from earlier lab sessions, we address an entire bus just by referring to its name, so we can easily scale this module up to a 4 or 8-bit multiplexer just by changing the number of inputs. The assignment line itself doesn't change. The RTL of the result shows that we've implemented our multiplexer correctly. On the device, however, this design is still implemented in lookup tables. Despite being such a fundamental component of digital electronics, there aren't actually any general purpose multiplexers for use. In this video, we've covered continuous assignment and how it can be used to simplify our Verilog designs. Going ahead, you should use it as much as possible, as it is a far more versatile way to build modules. However, you should always check the RTL as you go along. It's very easy to get the gate shorthand notation wrong. Next week, we'll be looking at procedural assignment to start adding sequential logic to our designs.